I would like to ask you a question about um, your own political background in the 60s and that you were uh, attracted to Trotskyism in mm -hmm. the 1960s. And I wanted you to um, speak a bit about that in terms of, um, I think the first book that I read by you was uh, Introducing Trotsky <laughs> when I was a young undergraduate. And um, The comic book. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, it's a good book. Um, so I'd, I'd like to ask you about um, your attraction to Trotskyism at that time, which was a current of the old left. And um, the historical significance that you um, grant that today? Well, um, I was not a member of anything till 1968. I was uh, an activist, very heavily involved in the Vietnam solidarity campaigns against the war uh, in Vietnam. Uh, what had you know, I was always radical and on the left, but what really gave me a fantastic sort of fillip was going to North Vietnam for six, uh, six weeks at the height of the bombings and actually being with the Vietnamese as they were being bombed every single day. You know, we could not travel from one part of the country to the other during the day because it was too dangerous. So we, it was like working shifts. You slept during the day and you woke up the minute the sun went down and then you began your travels. And then the minute the sun came out, you stopped uh, because anything that moved in the country was being bombed by the United States. It was incredibly heavy saturation bombing all over the country that was taking place. So after six, um, six weeks of that, uh, and I was there investigating war crimes on behalf of the Bertrand Russell and Jean-Paul Sartre war crimes tribunal that was created by these two European philosophers because no one else was doing anything. And so, you know, we were noting things down and the number of dead bodies you saw of children, of women, of ordinary civilians going about their work being killed was quite horrific, but, you know, it did sort of educate you uh, in a very concrete way as to what empires do when uh, they feel under threat or when they are sort of defending themselves uh, and defending their allies. So that was a very big experience. And then I came back to Europe after that and a big anti-Vietnam War movement was created in which I helped with many others. And there was, uh, at that point we felt that being part of a single issue movement wasn't enough, we wanted to do something larger and the choices were either you join the social democratic parties, which was very difficult to do in Britain since this party was in power and defending the war in Vietnam, so that made it a you know, bit of a problem. Labor. Uh, then you had uh, in Britain a tiny communist party, uh, which was not very effective. Uh, and then you had in Britain three or four Trotskyist groups, so the choice was there uh, as to which of these to go for. And for a long time I didn't go with I any of them. And then once in Berlin in February 1968, there was a giant rally against the Vietnam War. Uh, and Rudy Dritschka spoke, I spoke, the French leaders spoke, and then we marched, you know, 100,000 people marched from the heart of the Kudam, the Kufustendam in Berlin, to the Berlin Wall. And the hostility with which we were greeted by the citizens of Berlin, who had, you know, many of whom had, uh, should have known better, the, what they chanted at us was sort of really fascist type slogans. Uh, and then when we arrived at the Berlin Wall, the East German border guards looked on at amazement at this large demonstration carrying portraits of Rosa